Why isn't the left focusing on ending slavery across the globe? It still goes on everywhere. If you believe that it's our moral duty to intervene as the caretaker for planet Earth, why not focus right now on fighting actual systemic, chronic, deadly, ongoing, non-stop human trafficking and slavery of today? Question of the day. Uh, how much do you feel you owe in reparations? If you were to put a number on it, exactly. Option of not supporting reparations, not on the table. How much do you think you owe dollars and cents? Please comment below. The context of this is, of course, in recent town halls, all of the DNC candidates have uh, talked about their support for reparations. If reparations are not part of your plan to end the wealth gap for black people, what is? Good, good question. Uh, no, as it's you know, not. In the House, <laughs> Sheila Jackson Lee has introduced it, and I have said that if the House and the Senate pass it, I will sign it. And also, it. black Today people America, or descendants of slaves? In the midst of massive income and wealth disparity, yeah. we have another level of disparity between black and white. So do you support financial reparations? I, I support that we study that. We should study <laughs> and see. And then we exactly how I like the that. response what a fine should be line. played yes. out and how it should be worked. Like I believe it's time to start the national, full-blown conversation about reparations <laughs> in this country. This is also known as uh, the Democrats, the Midwest can suck it conversation. <laughs> yeah. All but guaranteeing another election for Donald Trump. So here's the thing. This whole concept is based on the premise that there is a feasible reparations plan. I want to go through a few claims with reparations. We've talked about slavery. We've talked about discrimination in general, not specifically reparations, because it used to be kind of a joke in the barbershop film. Where exactly. did it come from? And, Where that, did it come and from? Al Sharpton know. would talk about, but we weren't really talking about making this generation of people just pay out money. Um, so it's based on this idea that there's actually a feasible plan for reparations. Here's my question, how? Really, and who would qualify for reparations? All African Americans, just those who can provide geneal uh, genealogical evidence that their ancestors were slaves, who would pay? All Americans, you're gonna tax a new first generation, low income Latina, no role in slavery, she have to pay for reparations? Should we just give a grand to anyone pushing a mixtape, call it even? <laughs> you know, should, should, my, should my family who wasn't even here in the 1800s have to pay reparations? Well, I don't, I don't know, this is the question. Do I you have to just, pay myself. Do you just tax white people? Do you, do you have to get <laughs> documentation work. proving that their ancestors were slave owners? And what about the yeah. black people descended from black slave owners? They write themselves a tax refund? How do you know <laughs> that this plan for people who are listening, how do you know it's completely unmanageable? Watch the candidates try to answer with any concrete details as to how it would work. Don't take my word for it. Senator Harris and Senator Warren have both kind of spoken out and said that they agree with some form of reparations. Well, what the question is, what do we... I'm not dodging the question. The question is, what do we mean? <laughs> Sounds by defensive. I haven't answered it yet. I mean, it, it, it I'm not to dodging by, not, a lot of by doing the dodge. I support <laughs> the bill in the House to appoint a congressional panel to, of experts, of people who are studying this, who talk about different ways we may be able to do it. Appoint well, a look, panel. I think that we have got we'll to talk. address that, um, again, it's back to the inequities. They're through, you know, look. <laughs> This is what political doublespeak sounds like. <laughs> and this is something that it's based on this, that it's predicated on the idea that reparations are necessary because even today's generations, this is what I got into uh, it with AOC uh, over on Twitter, today's generations are still feeling the negative systemic ramifications of slavery, right? This is the argument. This is important for people to understand here. The race wage gap is, is a lot like the gender wage gap. It's just a flawed general average comparison. It doesn't take into account college degrees. It doesn't take into account hours worked. It doesn't take into account the field of work. Just comparing annual earnings of different races, sure. We see that African Americans, black Americans, people of color, whatever you want to call them, 73% of what whites make. But like the wage gap, okay, if we dig a little deeper, average annual income increases with age. Okay, this is something that yeah, we know. That's true. It peaks in the 40s, 50s. The median minority age for black people is, is, is 31. For white people, it's 43. Doesn't matter what race, by the way. People in their early 30s make about 75% of what people in their 40s do. Wage gap between blacks and whites starts to close when you look at that. We can get really nerdy about this here. We can get into a bunch of reasons as to why the wage gap, the race wage gap exists. But is, here, here's something important. Is there a direct comparison, right? Do we have a direct side-by-side -side comparison of people with the same degree working the same job? Well. Glad you've asked. <laughs> when we compare whites and blacks based on their education levels, we see that wage gap shrink even more. It reverses in some demographics. Black women with advanced degrees actually make more than white women with advanced degrees. 
African Americans with doctorates make more mm-hmm. than white Americans with doctorates. <laughs> now, mm. not across the board. I'm not saying this is in yeah, every I mean, case. Hashtag not all. And I know some people will argue that systemic discrimination, it, keep, that's, it keeps black kids out of schools that they weren't able to get an education until recently. Well, you know what? There's something now called affirmative action. And if you look at affirmative action at colleges, it's easier for black students to get in on a per capita basis than white people. There are race-based scholarships that help with the cost. Lower wages in African-American households, largely due to choices made by the current generation, I should specify. This was different. I think you would acknowledge this, Bill. This is different before when you talk about people who didn't have the right to vote. Yeah, of course that's going to... If you talk about people who didn't have the ability to go to the same colleges, that's not what's happening right now. Example, one of the biggest determining factors, of course, of poverty, having children out of wedlock, occurs disproportionately in the black community. Right? Look, look yeah. at the, the civil rights movement. They made great strides reducing discrimination. Rate of out of wedlock birth skyrocketed. And here's something else. Half Asian Bill will like it, though they're not necessarily your, your clan, to use the word. Let's <laughs> compare this with another minority group, uh, one with particularly strong marital rates, the Japanese. And I know that some of you are going to be saying, well, they haven't faced the same discrimination. To you, I would say, Google World War II <laughs> internment camps, Sean King. <laughs> Let's look at Japanese Might Americans. Be a thing. U.S. born Jap, they make a median income of almost a third more than your average American. So this this is what's important to me. This idea that slave reparations is complete, it, it, it's a workable concept. It's based on completely faulty evidence. And this is one hypocrisy that I rarely hear mentioned when we're talking about uh, reparations, which stands out at me the most. The politicians who advocate for this are the same people who believe that it's also our moral duty to pay for nations abroad, right? They talk, someone sat down at the change my mind, like, well, you know, instead of building a wall, why don't we help these countries in Mexico and Central America and South America? Well, how do you mean? By giving them more money, then they wouldn't want to come here. So they have no problem spending money abroad. Okay, so by their logic, which number one, it's morally imperative for us to help other nations with our wealth. And then number two, the reason they support reparations is because they believe it's history's greatest evil. The United States history's greatest evil, right? Here's my question, why aren't the, why isn't the left focusing on ending slavery across the globe? It still goes on everywhere, like (laughs) all the time. If you believe that it's our moral duty to intervene as the caretaker for planet Earth, why not focus right now on fighting actual systemic, chronic, deadly, ongoing, nonstop human trafficking and slavery of today. We could do, by the way, we could be far more effective in doing that than providing retroactive disaster relief for which we, we can't even account, we can't control. And by the left's logic, it'd be, pretty hard, you know, it'd be pretty hard here to argue that we need to place a priority on reparations in the form of free college, healthcare, housing to people five generations removed from any actual slavery <laughs> in the face of actually being able to end <laughs> slavery abroad. Am I missing this? Is there something that I'm missing? No, no I think you got covered. Now, if they were non-interventionists, if you said, well, hold on, what do we need? If they said, it's not our job to pay for the world. Well, fine. I get why you don't want to go in and bust down the door of a slave owner. But you do believe that we should spend money everywhere else. And you think that slavery, for which 600,000 people died in the United States, is our greatest evil? Why don't you stop it right now? But I, I, I don't have money, though. If like, they do have plenty of money. And by the way, if, if we see that black Americans uh, have the freedom of choice and they get to continue to improve their economic situation as we see, let me posit something else to you. Here's a clip of Bernie. Radical socialist Dwight D. Eisenhower was president. I think the highest marginal tax rate was something like 90 It was 90 When you think about 90%, you don't think that's obviously too high? No. <laughs> I love how the, the, the question there is, you don't think it's obviously too high. In other words, he's trying to get, he's, yeah. Your Softball. Honor, leading the witness. Do you not believe that 90% is obviously extreme? No, the defense is wrong. Shit! Okay, so l- let's say for a second, a black American gets himself into the top 1%. And that means that the annual household income is somewhere, depending which numbers you use, 250,000 to 400,000 a year. Let's just assume that a black man becomes a moderately successful lawyer or doctor, right? Lawyer, doctor, pretty much automatically 1%, as long as you're in your your, your 30s, 40s, and you have it from a decent school. And Bernie wants to take 90% of what that black man earns, effectively forcing said black man to work at the hands of the government should he want any future wages for 90% of the remaining fiscal year. How is that not slavery? Okay, if you like this video, you know, you watch videos on YouTube. If I were Jimmy Kimmel, if I were Stephen Colbert, or Trevor Noah, I would tell you to subscribe. 
But I have no corporate overlords who demand that I do this demeaning promo. I do the demeaning promo because I choose to. Subscribe or hit the notification bell because I need you. I need you. Please do it.